Yeah, what's up, dude? What? No, no, I can't put us on the top ten list, you idiot. Jesus Christ. Hey. Break it down. <laughs> What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Colin, and welcome to the Imaginarium. Now today, it is going to be a video about 10 awesome on-screen duos. Now, the reason I'm doing 10, aw 10 awesome on-screen duos this week is because the movie Central Intelligence is coming out this week with The Rock and Kevin Hart. I was going to do something on Finding Dory because I thought it was more of an ensemble cast, but then I realized that didn't really fit. Um, so I, I X'd that. So this is 10 awesome on-screen duos uh, in honor of Central Intelligence. The Finding Dory related video will be in tomorrow's video, and you'll have to check the description in every order to find out what that one is. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Number 10. Nicholas Cage and John Travolta in Face Off. Now, to be completely honest, this is kind of a biased pick, and I know they're not, it's not the best movie, but oh my god, are these two amazing on screen together. Just the whole vibe of how fucking crazy that movie is, and how insane they both are, and they just play off of each other so well. And you really believe that the other is playing the other, but they're trying to outdo each other at the same time. And it's just a beautiful thing to watch. If you haven't seen Face Off, highly recommend it for a good time with your friends. Um, what you do in that time with your friends is completely up to you. I don't condone anything. But you know, it's a, it's a fun time overall. So number 10 is Nicolas Cage and John Travolta in Face Off. Number 9. Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Linings Playbook. So Silver Linings Playbook is a really good movie, but what makes the movie work is not, in my opinion, not really the directing by David O. Russell, but the amount of chemistry that Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence have in that movie. And when I say chemistry, I'm not talking completely like romantic, like, oh, you can just feel the flame sparking, but you really do feel like these two people are like at a crisis, crisis, are a crisis in their life, and they're trying to get their and they're trying to get their lives back together. And you believe that they are truly connected in more ways than one. And it's just brilliant to see. On I was I, I was I wasn't really a fan of Jennifer Lawrence until this movie. Um, so and that that made me a fan. So anything that makes me a fan of a actor slash actress is always great. Bradley Cooper does what he does. And I, I just, you could just feel the insane chemistry between them, but not like romantic. Although there was romantic chemistry, but it was more of a, like a deeper connection between the two of them. So number nine, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Lang's Playbook. Number eight, Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor in Singing in the Rain. Now, one of my favorite musicals of all time, is Singing in the Rain. It's arguably my favorite. And in this movie, Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor are the ultimate best friend duo. You just feel like they had you feel like they've actually grown up with each other through the years, especially from the early kid scenes in the movie to when they're like fighting for their reputation at the end. It just works so well. They they're truly believable in what they're doing. And they both have this sense of just come this just ultimate camaraderie. Like this is what I, I hate to make this. This is what like squad goals really is. Like back in the day, you know what I mean. And so that is my number eight. Definitely go check out Singing in the Rain if you haven't, because it's a masterpiece and they just work so well together. So yeah. Number seven, Jean Renault. And Natalie Portman in Leon the Professional. Now, this kind of may be bias, but I don't think it is. In fact, I think this is underrated. This is a movie that gets talked about sometimes, but doesn't get talked about enough. And 
Jean Reno is in the same light. is an actor that gets talked about sometimes, but doesn't get talked about enough. I think he's brilliant. And young Natalie Portman in this. The thing about this pair is you can feel the insane desperation between the both of them to find something. And there's also the desperation but behind both of them, like, she's going to die, and he's got to kill these people. They're both at risk of dying at any moment. They just, you can just feel... The, and I love this because this is this is one that there's just not like it's not either it's not either a comrade relationship or it, it, what I'm trying to say is it's a male female relationship that it doesn't that's not romantic it's just like I, I've got your back and you've got mine and throwing aside that they were both incredible performances in the first place you can just feel that type of bond between them. Um, I know I'm going to say a lot of the same things for most of these, but hey, you know what I'm saying. So absolutely check out uh, the um, Leon the Professional because it's, it's amazing. And young Natalie Portman in one of her best roles, in my opinion, and Jean Reno. Awesome movie. Awesome pairing. Let's go to the next. Number six, Ethan Hawke and Julia Delpy in the Before series. So, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I say the Before series, it's a trilogy with Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before uh, Midnight. And it's a trilogy that not many people know about, honestly, and it's kind of sad because it's Julia Delpy's best work by far, and Ethan Hawke is, fanta is Ethan Hawke. He's fantastic in it as well. And... This is one I like because it combines all of the romantic elements that you see in all of these kind of cheesy, but it's a real relationship. You feel that this is a real thing. You feel that like this is a real connection, not just one of these forced things. And also it has a beautiful directing style to it, but that's about the movie. We're talking about the on-screen duo. And um, they just work. I know that's, that it sounds weird, but they just work. And the fact that you get to see them progress through the years and the years and the years, and they maintain, through three movies, they maintain the same level of connection throughout, their, through, throughout that span, which is about three decades. It is so good, guys. If you, now, out of all of the movies... Uh, all the uh, films slash trilogies slash everything that I have on here. Eh, if you haven't seen these, go get your significant other and go watch them right now because they are fantastic. And Ethan Hawke and Julia Delpy are a match made in cinematic heaven. Number five, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover in the Lethal Weapon franchise. How could you even ever remotely leave Riggs and Murtaugh off of this list. The buddy cop, I guess the only buddy cops on this list, Riggs and Murtaugh, the classic lethal weapons, like there's no way, they just, they're, they have such insane chemistry, you know, the whole classic, they basically started the old guy with the young cop, they're perfect together, Danny Glover is so underrated and he deserves more roles and Mel Gibson was actually a good actor, guys, he was actually a good actor. The best person? Probably not, but he was a pretty good actor. And they both sh showcased their talent at immense levels um, in, this, uh, in, the, in this franchise, basically. Especially the first couple. So, number five is... Mel Gibson, David Glover, with the weapon. Pow! Number four. Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. I mean, come on. You, you saw this coming, right? You had to have seen this coming. These two are basically the young adult couple of cinema. That's what the young adult couple is known as. The people, due to the fact that they were in the Titanic together and they were, had such great chemistry and romance, people still make up like rumors about them. They want them to date because they were so perfect together. And you can tell from their off-screen chemistry that they are, they, 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 that they really had that connection on screen. And vice versa. Um, th th maybe I'm going to put it out there, the best romantic couple in cinema ever. Of course, I guess 
according to my list, that's wrong. But hey, I love to contradict myself. But yeah, these guys are super awesome. You've seen the Titanic, so I'm not gonna go recommend you to go. I'm not gonna recommend you to go watch it. But yeah, I had to put them on the list at some point because you can't just leave them off. So that's number four. Number three, Meg Ryan in Tom Hanks in many movies. <laughs> Now, if you weren't, if you don't have a middle-aged mother right now, and you weren't alive in the, month, in the 90s, then you might not know about the Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan craze that swept over America. These guys did two films in particular, You've Got Mail and Sleepless in Seattle, and their chemistry, again, is just sky high, man. These movies took over the world in a way that you could never imagine, and we still talk about them and watch them to this day as actually good romantic comedy as opposed to romantic comedies nowadays, but that's not for right now. I think we'll have a topic Tuesday, Tuesday's topic about that sometime in the future, hopefully. But yeah, uh, please go watch these movies. I hate romantic comedies, and I really liked these movies. They were really good. Um... Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, they just, and it's, it's also that, I, the, the thing about romantic comedies nowadays for me is it's all about like the sexual part of the romance. But with these, with, the, with these two, you really get to feel like the friendship, like they're friends, like they're able to actually have a good, di they're actually able to have good dialogue with each other as opposed to, ooh, how you doing? I'm going to look at you from across the room and say, <sighs> it's not like that. And that's why I love it. And that's why they're number three on this list. Number two, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost in the Cornetto Trilogy. One of my favorite duos of all time, Simon Pegg and Nick, Nick Frost. The British, in my opinion, the uh, Monty Python type guys of this generation. They are geniuses. Um, and they're, they showcase their chemistry extremely well in... Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz just because they're paired off and uh, in the world's end there are five of them but especially towards the end of world world's end you can just see they're brothers there's no way that they're not brothers they have they're the best bros to ever grace the screen I'm gonna say that right now they are the best bros to ever be on screen ever in the history of ever I'm, I'm going out there to say that they just play off of each other better than they would play off of themselves. Does that make sense? They're, they're, they're better together than they are solo. They just make each other's, they just enhance each other to another level. They just challenge each other and bring each other higher. Um, the, the one I can think about is Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz, they just work so well together. And I know I'm aware that that part of that is the uh, directing of Edgar Wright, but these guys are just fantastic. If you haven't seen the Cornetto Trilogy, what are you doing with your life? And go see it right now. Um, there is a very, very niche legion of fans to these films. And what niche is that? Um, niche is a niche that loves fucking amazing movies. So go see it. It's awesome. Just watch it right now. Um, I can't, I can't begin, uh, I can't say enough about the Cornetto Trilogy. Awesome films made possible by an amazing duo. So if that's number two, what's number one? And number one. Now, as we get deeper and deeper into this channel, you guys will find out about my love for the for the director, David Fincher. Um, he's about more, he's arguably, well, probably like my top three favorite directors of all time. So if you, if you can, if you've gotten this far, then you'll figure out what it is. It's, um, Edward Norton and Brad Pitt in Fight Club. What can I say? What, 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 what can I say about these two that haven't been said already? Um, they're, um, spoilers. Spoilers. If you don't know the twist, and it hasn't been spoiled for you, and you want to see this movie, click off. Right now. Anyways, they're, they're each other. They play the perfect opposite parts of a human being. It's amazing. They mindfuck you in such ways. And these are two of also, in my opinion, our greatest actors of our, like, the, 
like our generation type thing. Oh, they are just so good. There's there's nothing that hasn't been said about them. I just love them so much. And they're the classic duo. They, they just work so well. I don't even know what to say about it. Like, whenever I, I have a whole lot of notes written down of, on this, but there's just so much you can say, but it's already been said. So I'm just going to leave it off with number one, Brad Pitt, Edward Norton, Fight Club. And if you want to hear more about this, I'm there's no way that I'm not doing an, an, an analyzed video on Fight Club in the future. So look forward to that. All right, guys. So those are 10 awesome on-screen duos, in my opinion. Um, and you know what? Maybe this weekend we could... Excuse me. I had... I'm so sorry. I burp every single video and it's really bothering me. Maybe we can add The Rock and Kevin Hart to this list. Probably not, but you know, because these are like 10 of, my, in my opinion, the greatest. And so this is the video for today. So today I've uploaded Warcraft, and I will be uploading this tonight. And so tomorrow, I'm going to see how I do on a Tuesday's topic on my own. I'm going to be doing it by myself. Brandon's not going to be here. And if you want to know what Tuesday's topic is, it's in the description. Um... So, I hope you guys enjoyed this list. I know it was a little all over the place because there's really, in in this, ten, in these ten, even though there's like two or three different types of character, you kind of just have, there's the same thing with all of them. They have great chemistry. They work well off of each other, yada, yada, yada. So, I, and, and with, with the romantic couples, they have great romance and all that shit. But I hope you guys enjoyed this list. Um, again, like, comment, and there will be an annotation above my head to subscribe. I am Colin. That is my name. And just don't forget to be safe and always take a cab.